Early last year I reviewed a 60% mechanical keyboard and that video got quite a lot of attention and positive feedback. It was a very appealing board due to having such a minimalistic design and just the essential inputs. Well now, we're going to be taking a look at a keyboard that I think many of you will appreciate. That is the Royal Kludge RK84, an 80% mechanical keyboard. But is it worth it? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. For this video, I wanted to take a look at a unique keyboard, one that I think many of you small form factor and minimalistic design fanatics will really like. This is the Royal Kludge RK84, and what makes this keyboard unique is its 80% key layout. To start off, let's do a quick unboxing. The keyboard comes in a fairly small sized box with some labeling on it, nothing too crazy and it's typically what you'd expect from packaging for this kind of product. Inside we get the keyboard itself, a USB-C cable, some extra keycaps, which we'll talk more about later, and a keycap and switch puller along with some feet, and that's pretty much it. Let's talk about first impressions. Right off the bat, I must say that I'm really digging this 80% layout. It's not quite as small as my Dyra DK63, but it's at least substantially smaller than a 10 keyless keyboard without sacrificing too much in terms of the keys that are available. Whereas with a 60% keyboard, the design ends up omitting a lot of redundant keys, which is fine, but you do also lose the function row, delete, home, and page up and down buttons. The Royal Kludge RK84 ends up retaining those keys, but you end up with a form factor that's still nicely compact. This keyboard has a lot going for it. I'd say really the only major absence I noticed while using this would be a number pad, and that's really it. The RK84 is also very portable, as you can see it's absolutely dwarfed by my Royal Kludge RK919, and that is a full size keyboard which I use for my personal slash editing rig. In terms of dimensions, the RK84 is about 12.4 inches wide. 5 inches in terms of length and is about 1.2 inches thick accounting for the extrusion on, on the bottom. The size of the keyboard is great because sometimes while running benchmarks on my test bench, I'd have my 10 keyless keyboard connected alongside my full size and that would create quite a bit of clutter but with this I don't really have to worry about that anymore. Area management on a desk should not be a problem at all with this keyboard. I can use this keyboard without any problems on my Targus lap desk which I use for my gaming PC which is hooked up to my OLED for a relaxed couch setup. Let's move on to the aesthetics and the design of the keyboard. The RK84 visually and physically has a pretty simple and minimalistic design. The whole entire keyboard has this smooth matte black finish to it. The frame of the keyboard is completely made out of ABS plastic. At this price point though, I would have at least liked to have seen a metal base plate used, but it's not a huge deal breaker. On the upside though, the keyboard still feels very, fairly robust sturdy and has a good amount of weight to it. The board is put together very well and there was practically no flex at all in the body of the keyboard, so they're using some fairly high quality plastic here. What's also nice is the inclusion of the frame around the keyboard, which you can either choose to leave on for an embedded look or take it off for a more traditional open concept look. I chose to leave it on because I think it looks more sleeker that way. This keyboard uses a set of black ABS plastic keycaps, and I gotta say they do feel a bit on the cheap side. They have a rough texture on them which I immediately noticed when using the keyboard, and I'm not sure if it's the keyboard's RGB implementation or the keycaps themselves, as they don't let a lot of illumination through for the RGB effects, even at the highest setting. They appear to be pretty dim. I was tempted on just buying a set of PVT keycaps to replace these stock ones. The stock keycaps will do the job just fine, just don't expect any sort of spectacular quality out of them. At the bottom of the keyboard, you don't have any feet that you can flip up for elevation, however you do have these magnetic feet which you can attach on if you do need the extra height. Without them, the RK84 has an elevated tilt of 8 degrees, and with them on, it's at around 12 degrees. I personally like keeping the feet on as the extra height made it more comfortable for me personally. Aside from that, you'll notice that there are two switches there. One is for your power switch, if you want to use the keyboard in wireless mode, and there are two wireless modes to choose from, which is what the other switch is for. You can choose to use the keyboard with the 2.4 GHz dongle, or choose to use it in Bluetooth mode. Now since we're on the subject of wireless connectivity, let's talk about that a bit more. At first, when I was using the keyboard wirelessly with my test bench, I used it with the 2.4 GHz dongle and the keyboard was only about a foot away. I didn't notice any sort of issues in terms of lag, intermittent connection issues, or keys registering an incorrect amount. However, when I chose to use the keyboard with my couch gaming setup where I would be sitting about 7-8 to eight feet away, 
the keyboard was having some major problems. There was a significant delay from when I would press a key and when it would register, it would disconnect frequently and it wouldn't even register the right amount of keystrokes accurately. When I switched to Bluetooth mode, those problems went away, and I haven't noticed any sort of issues since then. Key presses register with little to no latency, and I haven't had a disconnect on me. So if you're going to be using the keyboard wirelessly, I'd opt to use it in Bluetooth mode. Kind of ironic I'm saying that since I did make a video recently talking about how my Xbox controller gave me problems when using it in Bluetooth mode, but here there were no problems with performance, so rest assured you won't have to worry about that. Another thing that I wanted to point out was that this keyboard does also have two USB-A ports on it. That was a pleasant surprise, I've seen much larger full-size keyboards come with no USB ports. These are great because you can plug in a mouse or controller and that's helpful in situations where you don't want to clutter your setup with a bunch of cables and having them run through your desk. Since this is a mechanical keyboard, let's talk about one of its major selling points, the key switches. So I opted for the red switch version. Red switches are my favorite. I personally like the straight linear path of red switches rather than the tactile bump. However, they do sell a blue switch and brown switch version, so if those suit your preferences better, you have multiple options there. The switches that they're using are their own in-house TTC switches, but they felt pretty similar to Gateron switches I've used in the past, and that's a good thing. They were consistent, smooth, and they didn't have that scratchy feeling you'd get with other cheap switches or cherry clones. Along with that, if you feel the need to put in your own switches that you're accustomed to, well, you have the total freedom to do just that, as this keyboard is hot swappable and you can use 3-pin or 5-pin switches, which is very cool and convenient. The stabilizers that the RK is using is also very good and they feel very high quality. They come pre-lubed and there wasn't any sort of rattling I noticed from them. So you can expect a fantastic typing and gaming experience from them, which to be honest, I'd say is the most important aspect of a keyboard, as that's the main portion you'll be constantly interacting with. Here is a sound test of the keyboard. As for the RGB, there are many onboard effects that you can choose from, and that's great as I personally don't go too in depth with customization in this area. I tend to just leave a simple wave and cycling mode on my RGB keyboards. If you do want to customize the keyboard in regards to various effects, they do also have a software which you can download to configure the lighting to your preference. It's a straightforward and simple software to use. However, as I had mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if it's the keycaps they're using or the LEDs, but the RGB lighting even on the highest setting was fairly dim. On the lowest setting, it seemed like they were barely on, so I'm not really sure what was going on in that regard. When it comes to battery life, the RK84 does exceptionally well. I've used the keyboard straight for about 5 days with the RGB lighting on high, playing every day for about 2-3 to three hours, and didn't have to charge it. Obviously your mileage may vary, but if you play moderately every day, you won't have to remember to charge it every day. But what I also liked about this keyboard was that it will turn off the RGB LEDs after about a minute or so of inactivity, and when you press a key, they will come back on right away. I also like that this keyboard doesn't go to sleep fully and I prefer that because I know sometimes during a cutscene, the keyboard would go to sleep and then as soon as you're thrown back into action, you don't want any sort of delay because then well, you'll end up dying. But in this case, you're pretty much ready to go. With my DK63, this was a bit of a problem as that keyboard would take like 2-5 to five seconds to wake up and that could be a little bit annoying. If you're in the market for a nice compact keyboard that has excellent build quality, still retains most of these commonly used keys and is feature packed, then I highly recommend picking up the RK84. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description to where you can pick one up. There will also be a 10% off coupon there so you can take advantage of that as well. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.